Hello everyone, welcome back to today's part of the session. Mainly in today's part of the session, let us get to know the concepts related to the disposal of the effluents. I am taking on to the model number 3, wherein the model number 3 mainly deals with respect to the disposal of the effluents as well as the primary treatment. What are the flow charts, its unit process as well as the operations also. Mainly in today's session, let me take up on for the disposal of the effluents. Disposal of the effluents is mainly refers to the discharge of the wastewater either onto the surface water bodies or onto the land. The wastewater which has to be disposed has certain set of the conditions. Whether there are favorable or non-favorable, it has to be based upon the professional judgment as well as to comply with respect to the standards set by Central Pollution Control Board as well as the State Pollution Control Board as well as the authorities which takes part actively in maintaining the quality of the water either onto the land or the surface or maybe the groundwater bodies also. With this let me discuss in the previous part of the models, in the model 1 and model 2, you get to know what are the sources of the wastewater generation, how they are generated, how they are collected, conveyed and next upcoming part in the model number 2, you have studied relatively to the designing of the sewer systems, collection of the sewerage system and hydraulic design principles based upon the governing principles of the design considerations and sampling. What are the characteristics, how to come across for the sampling. If at all, if the wastewater sample is analyzed in the laboratory, we get a different set of the parameters. These parameters are to be compared with the ready regner type of the standards. Some set of the parameters, if they are complying within the limit, then it is no okay, not a problem. If they are exceeding the prescribed limit, then there is a set of the nuisance or the new set of the problems that are arising which impacts not only on the human health but also on to the water bodies or the surrounding environmental systems. What are those health impacts and all? I have already explained in the characterization of the waste water itself. But the disposal of an effluence is also a critical way and we call it as end of an sorry before the waste water has to be di disposed onto the land or to the water bodies, it has to be subjected for the proper treatment then only. If it contains any plastics or non-biodegradable, they pose a th threat or maybe the hazard or even the different types of the hazard. I need not to explain all those things, either maybe the long term or the short term type of an effects and all. So that kind of the things get to take place. So now let us get to know how the impact of the pollution mainly takes place on the disposal of the effluents. This set of the modules has a two parts. One is the disposal of an effluent and primary treatment. Today I am going to explain the disposal of an effluent. Disposal of the effluents mainly consists of onto the land or onto the water bodies. Onto the land we have an irrigation system, overland flow, infiltration, on to the water bodies, we have surface water bodies, rivers and streams, lakes, oceans or sea or estuaries. In the case of the subsurface, we have a groundwater. Let me take upon for the land disposal methods. What are those? Irrigation technique. Disposal onto the irrigation mainly adopts the process of supplying the water to the crops in order to yield the yield, whatever the cereals or pulses or vegetables or any other things in the after the harvesting period is completed, the grains or any other things and all. Now the irrigation purpose here if you consider we have a different types of an irrigation either in the form of the sprinklers irrigation, furrow type, basin flooding, subsurface irrigation these are the set of the categories. If you come across in the case of the sprinkler irrigation where wastewater is disposed onto the surface of the land in the form of the sprinkler irrigation. Furrow type mainly consists of the depth like 30 to 50 centimeters, depth is driven and the width like 120 to 150 centimeters. So 30 to 50 centimeter depth, 120 to 130 centimeter in a width, 
So, clay placed in an alternative rows itself, that is why we call it as a furrow type of an irrigation. There is a basin flooding type of an irrigation where large amount of the water are surpassed over the surface of the given area. That we call it as basin flooding type of an irrigation process. Normally for the crops and all like a rice or paddies and all it requires a flooding type of an irrigation. Whereas we have the different types of the crops both edible as well as the non-edible type of the crops also. Getting the point clear for this. Mainly in the subsurface irrigation we have a perforated type of the pipes. These perforated pipes are placed beneath the ground wherein they supply the wastewater supply through the perforated pipes mainly consists of the roots which are driven over that and the uptake of the nutrient or any other essential things takes place by the plants. But this kind of an irrigation is not favorable, it is proved to be costly in nature, difficult to have a proper maintenance as well as operation systems. Therefore, it is not utilized only in remote areas it is practiced. Next type of an uh, advantages or the salient features let us get to know. The disposal through the irrigation where if you consider the yield is more, it accounts for 33 percent of the more yield when compared to that of the normal water supplied through the canals or maybe through any other channels also. The presence of the nutrients pose a greater advantages where the potassium, nitrate, phosphate, sulphate and the trace part of the nutrients are uptaken by the plants and the growth is also more and yield is also more based upon the presence of the nutrient. And advantages is related to the cash type of the crops, maybe the growing of the mulberry part of the plants and all, it is feasible there for the silkworm. And cash crops may be the non-edible type of the crops that is feasible there itself only. Next type if you come across is mainly related to the overland flow. The overland flow mainly consists of applicability of the wastewater on the surface of the land where it is impermeable in nature. It accounts for the discharge of 2 to 8 percent and this condition is favorable only where there is a excess of the land itself. Meanwhile, if you take the third set of the process or the method through the infiltration means percolation of the wastewater on deep beneath the ground. This percolation is mainly governed by the soil porosity content, voidness content as well as the pervious content is the major factor. It is applicable only for the case of like a sandy loam type of the soil but not favorable in the case of the clay content. The reason is it tends to retain more amount of the water, no percolation takes place and it has to be applied where the region of the sandy or maybe loam soil are available in nature. These are the methodologies adopted for the disposal onto the land. Now what are the conditions which are favorable for the disposal of the land? Points to be noted here, it is feasible only if the Availability of the water where farmers have to fetch the water either from the canals and all if it is at a greater distance then through the nearby aid of the sources of wastewater you can come across in growing of the crops. Next condition, if at all when the ground water is less in nature or the water table is less in nature you need to recharge the ground water then you can adopt through the infiltration method of the uh, that is a process of disposal of the effluents onto the land where it acts as a multiple filter media where settleable solids are trapped there and the clear water or any other things get beneath the ground and joins the groundwater table. Next another condition on an intermittent basis, infiltration method is to be applied on an intermittent basis not a continuous basis. If it is applied in a continuous basis then it leads to the over logging of the deposition of the solids content. That is why we tend to avoid this part of the situation. 
getting the point clear for this observe some of the following pictures related to the irrigation and overland flow as well as the infiltration conditions once again I am repeating ok coming back to this conditions if the amount of the wastewater discharged is more on a continuous basis what happens the soil layer gets clogged what happens there are types of the bacteria you know that aerobic as well as anaerobic bacteria oxidation of the organic matter takes place with the emission of the some of the gases again when the oxygen content present in the soil is lesser what happens easily it get replaced by the anaerobic type of the bacteria which favors the growth and causes the odor as well as the nuisance also upon the decomposition of the remaining matter present in the wastewater. Meanwhile the clogged portion of the wastewater containing the settleable part of the solids and all the voids or the spaces gets filled up there and the fertility of the land is also lost that becomes a breeding place for the mosquitoes as well as insects and even for the rodents also and that creates a another biological health hazards that has to be taken into the utmost care while dealing with the disposal of the wastewater because wastewater itself only contains certain set of the parasites or maybe the bacteria virus all those contents so hence care and precautionary measures has to be taken because instead of getting the raw wastewater letting it onto the land it is better to have the treated wastewater the conditions which are favorable for the disposal of the effluents is mainly based upon the treated wastewater now let me denote the term what is meant by the sewage sickness sewage sickness refers to emission of obnoxious odor due to the application of the wastewater onto the land on a continuous basis mainly caused by the decomposition of the organic matter content present in the wastewater by the anaerobic bacteria sewage sickness is mainly caused due to the following factors what are those poor oxygen solubility content lesser amount of the voids due to the settlement of the solids they clog there and reduce the fertility of the soil these are the major causes which we call it as seaway sickness and that kind of the land has to be taken in a precautionary measures what are the conditions that are favorable for the disposal of the effluents the conditions which are favorable for the disposal of the effluents mainly refers to the treated wastewater favorable conditions pre-treated wastewater has to be applied over to the land and next set is changing or the rotation of the crops it can be avoided so favorable for disposal what are those favorable conditions one is the treatment second one crops hence the land has to be tilted in a proper manner instead of growing the same crops at a time the fertility can be replenished by growing the different crops that we call it as a rotation of the crops on a seasonal basis another important condition it is related to the type of the land type of land usually sandy as well as the loamy type of the conditions are favorable not the clay conditions for the groundwater recharge okay these are the conditions favorable where the water table content is very much low so water table content is very much low very much low in conditions instead of having the continuous basis intermittent basis is favorable 
I'll drop this apart. Continuous basis, intermittent basis. Intermittent basis of the supply of the waste water is feasible. Next one. What they are asking is related to the treated waste water to be loaded instead of raw. And loading rate should not be heavy, should not be in a heavy loading condition. Overland flow, it is in a heavy loading conditions. In this case, is in the overland flow. Whereas, if you take in the case of an infiltration and all, loading has to be in an intermittent manner. Shallow depth as well as drainage of the soil. Shallow depth and drainage of the soil. So, these are the precautionary measures or the favorable conditions to be taken upon the disposal of the effluents or the wastewater onto the land. Okay, we call it as a mass loading and all concepts. So, what are those mass loading concepts? We shall get to know in the later part of the classes. So, this is related to the disposal of the effluents onto the land. There is also another condition that is disposal of the sludge, the solid content and all continuous flow tilling of the land and disposal of the sludge mainly the amount of the waste water which are getting treated has certain part of the solid content. When the solid contents are processed off and they have to be disposed means they contain tracer part of the nutrients as well as utilizable for as a good manure content. And mainly if it is in a dried condition, it can be applied as a fertilizer also onto the land. This condition is only favorable if at all if it is treated in a proper manner without causing any nuisance. Otherwise, there are certain eggs of the parasites which hatches larva stage, pupa and then it tends to acquire a metamorphism flies, odors, insects, rodents, breeding places, it is a home for them that has to be curtailed. Then only it is utilizable. There are various set of the studies performed related to the sludge reutilization process and you can look upon for the pictures also. Getting the point clear? Okay. Let me move on to the disposal of the effluents on two the land. water disposal of effluence on water bodies water bodies as earlier i have stated they are either maybe the surface or maybe subsurface set of the water bodies, surface as well as subsurface. Disposal of the waste water onto the ground is mainly taking place in the case of like an uh, infiltration process as well as the overland process. Overland process means crops are, oh, oh, sorry, tend to flow in a sloped pitched position. They are relatively collected and some portion are infiltrated. That disposal we call it as uh, land type of the disposal which we have previously studied of. In here, the groundwater disposal means either the recharged wells or the bore wells which are not functioning or in working condition that can be utilized for the disposal of the waste water or the effluents on either to the subsurface. Now, let me concentrate on the surface water body. Surface water body is mainly consists of rivers and streams, lakes, ocean and sea and estuaries. Let me take upon the lakes, oceans and estuaries, rivers and streams, there are lots of things, there are lots of things to discuss. Now, 
The technique where the disposal of the effluent onto the water bodies is mainly governed by the term we call it as dilution process. We call it as dilution process. The disposal of the effluents onto the water bodies. I will discuss the dilution process, what are those and all. The term dilution process is mainly adopted where the amount or the availability of the water is quite large in volume. Availability of water is large in volume. large in volume. Then we can go for favoring of the disposal of the effluents. Again, I have a some set of the questions. If the effluents are disposal onto the surface water bodies, what are the fingertip guidelines or the thumb rules that are to be disposed of? Whether they have set any standards or not is a, a one set of the question. If they have set the standards, what is the manner? We have a IES availability of the water which is a large in volume, the dilution process tends to take place. This dilution process mainly it is occurring in the case of the lakes, oceans as well as estuaries onto the lakes also. How does the dilution process affects onto the lakes? First of all, let us get to know what are the conditions that are favorable for the disposal of the effluents. Conditions favorable for for disposal of effluents in water. First condition is the wastewater which is letting into the surface water bodies either in the case of the lakes or maybe the rivers, the bottom portion of the rivers which is moving on we call it as a river mouth, we call it as an estuary. Onto the lake, they are the land, uh, that is stagnant water bodies. These are the moving water bodies. Again, it is favorable only when the wastewater does not contain any detrimental matter. No detrimental matter. If the quantity of the or the volume of water for dilution is large. What happens if it is small in nature, you need to reduce the dilution factor instead of letting off the raw waste water, you need to let off the treated water. Based upon that we have a dilution factor. That means take some amount of the waste water and dissolve in the any of the 1 litre of the sample, maybe 2 ml in 1000 ml. Come in the, uh, in the case of the BOD estimation, same thing here also, large amount of the water should be made available for the dilution. Next, it has to be free from toxic substances because the presence of the toxic substances will impart health hazards not only to the human, that is the next part. Whatever the aquatic ecosystems that are living on either onto the lake or river or the estuaries or the seas or the oceans, there it impacts more. Nowadays you can see the deposition of the plastic waste and all, all those things. And it has to be fresh in nature, free from the toxic 
substances and moreover you can see the sea trash contents and all still the people are cleaning up on the sea and all why what is the reason because of the dis uh, deposition of the floatable organic uh, floatable substances as well as even the settleable matters also so floatable and settleable organic matter or solids are to be removed then only it favors for the proper disposal conditions next if the waste water is fresh in nature which is alkaline in nature in the interval period of 4 to 5 hours of the duration within that span of the time if it is disposed okay fine if it is stale means it leads to the anaerobic condition thereby decreasing the dissolved oxygen content which is a fatal for the aquatic systems either through the mixing or diffusion process diffusion process earlier i have stated the phenomena of transfer of the molecules from a region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration in response to the concentration gradient governed by the fixed law of the diffusion mixing means the outfall which is kept for the disposal either onto the lakes or onto the rivers and all they have to get mixed off completely and that we call it as a completely mixing process or a partially mixed conditions or intermittent mixed conditions we have to take it for when we deal with respect to the rivers and streams also next another set of the conditions not use it for the navigation purpose not use it for navigation purpose navigation purpose these are the favorable for the effluents in the wastewater that is without treatment or with partial part of the treatment okay next condition favor for the disposal of the necessitating for the treatment of the wastewater disposal this is without the treatment if the treatment has to be given if at all if you need to dispose there is no any other option further left in such situations what you need to do let us get to know so these are the set of the conditions no detrimental matter volume of the water available should be large free from the toxic floatable settleable organic solids and the waste water it is fresh in nature now there are certain changes what are those if at all the condition favorable for the disposal of the effluents in the water disposal of treated effluents here treated effluents into the water what is that situation water body is used for navigation where it has to be used for navigation and if it is used as a source of supply of water source of water supply source of water supply maybe at the upstream if there is a effluent that is discharged at the downstream you have this you consider it as upstream this is the downstream region you have a source of the water treatment plant available there then what conditions so critical analysis has to be made related to this getting the point clear for this okay source of the water supply navigation purpose and if the waste water is stale in nature if the waste water is stale in nature prior treatment is to be given and 
in the case of the oceans or the seas tidal current favors mixing and dilution okay the term dilution it refers to where the concentration of the substances are reduced by the dissolution of the constituents or the substances or the matter in the water since water is a universal solvent it tends to dissolve and thereby it leads to certain sort of the process either maybe uh, oxidation reduction reaeration like that sunlight actions these are the factors which are tend to affecting the conditions okay relatively conditions which are favorable for the disposal of the treated water mainly no detrimental matter free from the toxic substances should be very much larger that is the condition and for navigation purpose if it is used for the source of supply of water or waste water is completely stale in nature okay stale in nature tidal currents follow the mixing process these are the necessity for the favorable conditions for the disposal of the treated waste water now what happens if the waste water is letting into that untreatedly this is happening in majority of the cases if you take the rishabhavati valley itself only the amount of the waste water generated along with the storm water it is more the dilution process though it is taking place but natural part of the purification what we call it as the tendency of the waste water getting transformed or the concentration tends to reduce by the natural phenomenon of reduction oxidation aeration transformation as the transport of the substances as well as the decay of the substances these are the natural systems which are favorable if they are not favorable in nature the self purification capacity reduces thereby the requirement of the treatment plant or the setting up of the artificial treatment systems are made these artificial systems or the waste water treatment plant are mainly set up based upon the observation made up by the disposal of the effluents into the water bodies what are the impacts that has caused and how to recover all those things and all because in today's perspective saving of the water is a major crisis saving of the rain water as well as even recharging again if you take in the case of the lakes lakes are getting dried up lakes are getting polluted they have to be rejuvenated how to rejuvenate it how to restore back the ecosystems and all if the same process continues of the disposal then no set of the pure water will be available for the drinking purpose okay with this keeping in the mind i'll tend to stop at this particular point of the stage in the next part of the class let me take on the disposal of the waste water onto the rivers and streams before moving that uh, we shall uh, slightly check up on for this lakes it has to be a large area oceans and sea it has to be disposed greater than 1.5 kilometers and below the shore line not above the shore line it has to be disposed on because due to the tidal uh, waves and all it should not come back that is the one conditions because nowadays you can see large floatable organic matters that are tend to or the bulk items are settled down but it has caused a great threat to the ecosystem that is marine ecosystem has depleted yesterday's obviously there is a flow of the water we call it as a ebb flow as well as a tidal flow ebb flow means flowing from the river condition tidal flow means flowing from the sea water condition thereby due to the current portion of the water mixing takes place in a rapid manner hence it is favorable for the disposal condition because this contains mainly of salty water rather than the mineralized part of the water all the salt contents are present at a greater concentration and the temperature as well as the do content is slightly less in the case of the sea water when compared to that of the rivers or the streams and all okay there are the difference between the rivers and the streams how the disposal by the dilution obviously when the oceans are seas available 
the disposal bath through the dilution process can be adopted in only in the coastal areas not in the plateau type of the regions or the in the hilly area regions and upon for the rivers and streams i need to discuss so many set of the equations are coming up how the completely mixed process what is meant by mass loading and what is the depletion of the oxygen due to the accumulation of the bod rate of change of the organic matter how does it takes place all those things we need to get to discuss let me continue in the next part of the class still then stay tuned for it and please do rewatch if you have not understand the concepts and feel free to ask the question itself only thank you one and